Hey, this is Malcolm Andreation, and this is an overview of a tool I created to speed up modeling in Maya. So when I'm modeling, I always want to model things in quarters or halves and use instancing, and I do a lot of mirroring. And I find Maya's mirror tool just to be too slow. There's too many clicks, and you have to load the options box each time, and it just feels really clunky to me. I don't really want to fiddle with settings when I'm mirroring and trying out ideas, so I created a floating toolbox so I can one-click to mirror stuff. So I'll show you how that works. So you launch the tool by clicking uh, this button, and you get this little floating toolbox. I call it the Mirror-er. I tried to make it as slim as possible, so you can leave it open while you're modeling. So basically what you get is one click buttons to mirror on the different axes. So I can demonstrate that right now. Let's just make something that's non symmetrical here. So for example, if you click any one of these buttons here, it's just going to auto mirror the object along uh, the axis based on the object's pivot point. So you can go Y, get a mirror there. You can go along um, Z, then you can go along Y again. Uh, so it's just a really fast way to uh, mirror things as you're working through lower high poly modeling. So here you can just quickly move the pivot and boom, there you go again. Hey, I want to mirror it along this. Same sort of deal. Same with uh, this. So basically, no matter where you put the object's pivot, you just click the button and you get a mirror in that direction. Um, for those of you that are maybe new to Maya, uh, what I'm doing here to move the pivot around on the object is you hold D on the keyboard and that goes into the pivot mode. And then uh, if you hold V, you'll see up here when you hold V and D at the same time, you're entering pivot mode and you're also entering um, point snapping mode. So D plus V holding on the keyboard. And then if you middle mouse drag near any point, the pivot will automatically snap to that location. Um, so I find this to be the easiest way uh, to quickly uh, mirror stuff and do a lot of modeling functions in Maya. So if I want to even if this thing's not at the center of the world or anything, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you just quickly snap the pivot over there, DV, middle mouse drag, done, and then boom, mirror along blue, and you're done. And then, hey, let's do these guys both at the same time. Cool. And then you've got your um, symmetrical model set up there, mirrored, and hey, whatever. Want to delete these guys? Sure. Didn't, not liking the way that that's looking. Let's mirror it over here instead. Boom. Same sort of thing. So another really cool feature is that uh, the tool actually has support for instancing. So to do that, to turn on instancing, all you have to do is come down here and toggle the tick box on and off when you want to use instancing or no instancing. Uh, so when it's on, anything that you mirror, let's go along Z here, click it, is going to be uh, mirrored and it's going to become an instance. So if you make a modification to one of the objects, it affects all of the uh, objects components. So you can see that here. So same thing with this. I'm just going to grab these guys. Hey, let's go along Y. Uh, and then we've got four instances. And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. I don't really uh, model anything these days except if it's in like a quarter or a half. I try to do all my modeling this way just because it's a lot faster because um, you can make edits uh, to one quarter of it if it's a symmetrical model anyways and uh, it affects all four of them so I just find this a lot faster a lot easier to model this way um, and now the really cool thing also is uh, often you will find like great cool so I'm instancing this stuff but you get to a part of your model later on where this part wants to have a unique detail and like let's say these three other parts are still instance or whatever um, all you have to do is select the object. So here I have components, everything's instances right now, but I want this one to be unique. All you have to do is select it and just click this button here, instance to object. So once I've done that, these three guys are still unique here. Oh, sorry, these three guys are still instance, instances here. 
um, and then this one is unique. So if I move any of the birds on this guy, it doesn't affect the other ones. And hey, maybe you change your mind, you want to go back, it's really easy. Just delete the piece and just do that again. And there you go, everything's an instance again. Also, uh, if for some reason you actually do need to go into the Maya Mirror tool, um, I put a button on there as well. So let's have, let's say you have to use some weird function in there that uh, that's not uh, in the toolbox here or whatever. At any time, you can just click the Mirror Geometry tool, and that'll load up Maya's standard Mirror option box. Uh, but like I said, there's like having to go in here and like choose the access every time and like hit apply and do a mirror. It's just way too slow. When you're doing modeling, you just kind of uh, want to start working and not really think about any access or anything. Uh, the tool, of course, works with any type of object, really. So like I often model sub-D models in quarters because it's easier. So here's a quick example of that. Let's say that whatever. That's your edge there. And let's just put a cut here for fun, just as an example. And we'll extrude that guy there. So this will be an interesting example. So let's say I was actually making like an extruded square or whatever. So I'll just put the pivot here and uh, I'm just going to switch to sub D mode by pressing 2. And whoops, I'll turn off the border edges. So I'm going to press, uh, I'm going to make an instance and I'll go along blue and cool I kind of know what's going on there and then uh, let's say um, do this long red as well and then you can kind of you know work on your sub D model symmetrically this is how I do pretty much all of my modeling make edits there and it adjusts around the rest of the asset um, so I pretty much can't do any modeling at this point without this tool. I just got really used to it. I've been using it for a couple years already because um, I created it like uh, quite a while back. Uh, it just makes things so much faster. You get used to it and then uh, can't go back to the olden ways. Um, also, I color coded the buttons to match with the access uh, colors. So that's actually really handy for me. So we have the, the green, red, blue, XYZ. Um, and that color corresponds to this. And then I, I wouldn't think that would be like the greatest feature, but I got so used to it that I don't really think about XYZ anymore. I just kind of got the colors encoded in my head. So I actually found it to be really fast. Whereas with the regular uh, mirror tool, I'd always be like, okay, which way is X? Or even if I'm going to do a planar map, I'm like, which way is X? And I have to think about it for a second. Um, but with the color coding, uh, I kind of stopped thinking about it, which was kind of interesting to me. I got a, more of an advantage than I thought I would, where you just get so used to clicking these, you're like, oh, green just means up. So you're like, oh, I want to mirror this along up. I don't even think I just go boom, it's like straight to it. And it's like, oh, I want to mirror this along blue. And so I kind of started thinking about it color-coded instead. Here's something probably more appropriate that you would actually use the use the tool to do. This is how I'll start a lot of models that I'm working on. Whoops. Let's get that over there. Okay, so we're going to make an instance there and two instances there. Cool. And then I'll actually, once I've got things in quarters, I'll actually kind of shape it and you can kind of see it update in all axes at the same time. Let's say it's supposed to be taller, whatever. And then I could start adding some edge loops for the sub D. Another edge loop there. And edge loop there. Just kind of gives you an idea. Like, let's say you don't want to have to go through and update all four of those. I want to make this like more rounded or less rounded. Just update the one, one quarter and it'll update all the other sections uh, and then like I said maybe you want to make an edit whoops to this and you don't want it to update all the rest you can just go boom and now that's unique uh, so if you're interested in and you want to download the tool I will put the link in the description 
And that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and have a good day.